Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Dragan Savic and I work for KWR Water Research Institute in the Netherlands and I'm also professor of hydroinformatics at the University um, of Exeter. Today I'm going to talk about smart water and uh, digitalization. But first of all, apologies for not being there with you um, uh, because of this uh, coronavirus outbreak. Um, but I hope um, you'll enjoy this presentation and um, that you will be able uh, to see all my uh, slides. So um, KWR Water Research Institute is based in the Netherlands and it's a non-for-profit research organization that has about 180 uh, employees, over 130 uh, researchers. We are also a WHO collaborating center on water quality uh, and health. Um, digital world and digitalization, uh, we have um, the ability to sense almost anything and everything in this world and quantity of information is um, uh, unbelievably growing uh, day to day. So uh, by the time um, over the last two years uh, we accumulated more than 90% of information accumulated before all, over all the time before that. And also uh, digital services and, uh, are transforming uh, many aspects of our world. Why not water? For example, you know about Uber, you know about Amazon. So um, what, what is happening in, in the water sector? There is quite a lot of interest in um, digitalization. So you can see, for example, IWA um, has um, worked on um, digital water. IAHR, uh, International Association of Environmental Research, they are interested in the artificial intelligence applications in the water sector. So there is quite a lot of interest from professional organizations. Um, IWA went ahead and um, created this white paper on digital water and um, how industry leaders um, chart the transformation journey. So it's very interesting um, paper that talks uh, with over 40 uh, different uh, water utility leaders on how they uh, perceive uh, digital water and um, transformation that it brings to them. So I would um, start a um, proper presentation now with a question. If we, had, if we can have self-driving autonomous cars, autonomous vehicles um, using sensors, IoT, artificial intelligence, uh, if we can have autopilots in our planes using sensor technology, artificial intelligence and um, kind of creating this um, very powerful autopilot to assist the pilots in the cockpit. Um, can we have uh, sensors and IoT and artificial intelligence bring us smart water systems? But when I talk about water systems, I often think of silos. Think of silos. And why would that be? Uh, well, silos are what uh, we find quite often in utilities, the different areas of these water utilities um, do not work together or do not share information or it's difficult to share information. So what I see digitalization is that kind of um, technology that connects those various um, silos. So without further ado, I'll go into um, examples um, of these um, digital tools or digitalization and transformation in the water sector and particularly uh, for those in um, the Netherlands. I will start with a, a very simple um, here illustration of a digital twin. We all hear about how digital twins are going to change the shape uh, of water utilities but we had digital twins in the water sector um, 20 years ago so what is new what is that new element or what are the new elements um, of digital twins that we can bring um, to the water sector so if i go to um, a practical example that kwr is working on this is um, working in the 
city of Eindhoven uh, to develop a digital twin with the help of classical modeling tools. Those tools that we've been using for over 20 years, as I said, but also with some new uh, um, process tools. In this case, we call it SimDeum, which is a model uh, that helps us develop from bottom up kind of approach um, of developing demand curves or demand profiles uh, for water modeling. But this is enhanced by collecting the data or where the people are during the day. So mobile phone data in various areas combined with our modeling skills to develop this distributed model of demand in our system. Understanding demand in, in water supply and distribution system and wastewater system is actually a holy grail um, of uh, the uh, water utility sector. So, for example, we are looking into spatial resolution of mobile data. Uh, here we have a spatial resolution as the company resource zones. And then we have a spatial resolution of postal zones where these people are um, allocated through their mobile phones. And then we have here two months of different kind of um, areas within the system. So each graph represents different area and different um, curve represents uh, the number of people of various kind of um, aggregation levels of visitors to the area, of people who work in the area. So we have that kind of granularity to develop um, the pic better picture of demand. Um, I will also like to show you some of the work on artificial intelligence based optimization, the tool that we developed, Gondwana, uh, that is applied to various areas of network pipe design, transition optimization, DMA design, pressure sensor placement and water quality uh, sensor placement. So if we look into network optimization, an example here where it has been applied, um, this is um, a network uh, a real Dutch network that is optimized and here we show the links that increase in diameter and in increase in diameter. So red colors represent larger diameters. Here it represents the difference between the existing network and the new network. So the cooler colors represent reduced numbers and all of these are cooler where only few diameters are here being increased. If we look into transition optimization, this is just an example where we actually put the timing of these changes and I won't spend much time on that, but I would move to DMA design where we have this example in The Hague where they wanted to do um, a DMA design. I have to mention that in the Netherlands, the DMAs are designed based on water meters, not on closing valves. So basically like a dynamic um, DMA. So in the first step we look into uh, what would happen if we separate the transmission network and in that case we create 126 initial boundaries and then the company has already planned 14 flow meters so with that they will end up with four DMAs already are designed. But then we looked into um, the optimization algorithm that will give us the trade-off between the size um, of the DMA and the number of um, these flow meters. And you can see that the company has decided to go for this particular solution which lies somewhere in between, maybe at this kind of corner um, of the curve. And the step three would be to look into another optimization problem. If they actually wanted to close some of the valves, they could, uh, and these are the red ones here in the picture, we could optimize those and find out um, how many we can close and which ones have to be open in order to limit the drop, drop pressure in the system and preserve security of supply. Another example is looking into pressure sensor placement for leakage management, so sensitive places where we should put. This is again looking at a particular um, network. This is the existing network. This is in the south of the Netherlands. 
uh, it has already a number of these uh, pressure meters. The central part is uh, this densely uh, populated uh, part of the city and these are the potential locations of the new pressure sensors. So you can see that pressure sensors cannot be put everywhere and um, this is the requirement. But if we look into where these eight pressure sensors are, we can find out that some of them do not control any part of the system. We could not detect any of the leakages and particularly in this densely populated uh, central area. So if we do the optimization, we then have um, a Pareto curve, a trade-off curve between number of sensors and number of uh, or, and the size of the area that is controlled by that particular sender, sensor so that we can detect um, leakages. So you can see the network has grown in this area, in this area, but the center is still not good because we were limited where we could put those sensors and with 30 sensor locations um, we could have much better coverage. But these are the two locations that hang in the air. Why do they hang in the air? Because they wouldn't, um, that was the company that uh, engineers wanted to put them there, but they wouldn't provide any additional information about potential leakage in the system. So now I'll move to uh, application in, uh, in another company, which is um, Vitens. They developed their smart grid with uh, introduction of over 300 sensors, 9,000 kilometers of infrastructure and uh, dedicated infrastructure in the control room. So they have leak detection within district metered areas. Um, so they have measurements of the entries into uh, DMAs. They have um, the prediction of the demand in the system with this bandwidth monitor. And um, if we have the predicted values in green and the real values in blue, you can see, for example, that here they have a potential anomaly which is identified here on the uh, time scale. The interesting thing about Vitens is everything they develop is open source and is put on the GitHub. So uh, anybody can pick it up, use it, test it in their own uh, environment. They also have this situation where they uh, put um, water quality sensors in the system and they follow the quality where the water comes from different uh, sources, different colors, um, different source. But what is interesting by putting those sensors in, th this is one is the model, the blue is the model, uh, the orange is what was measured in the system. So they realized their model was 24 hours faster than what was happening in the network. Without the real-time measurement of uh, water quality, they wouldn't have gotten that um, information. In the uh, control room, they have a very sophisticated system where in addition to getting all this information to the control room operator, they also look, they scrape through the social media. So then they overlap social media information with what is happening in the network. So for example, they will have all the messages that mention VTENS, water, no water, or water quality issues um, in the system, overlap with a map and showing the number of these um, messages on all different um, social media so that they can combine information from the company and information um, that they uh, collect from the outside. So if you're talking about smart water systems, I think smart water systems are already happening. They're here. Uh, water companies are implementing them in the Netherlands and I'm sure they do that um, in the UK. So in conclusion, um, proliferation of sensing and sensors uh, provides new opportunities uh, for water utilities. Um, more information can be collected and more information can be integrated with the information coming from the outside. You know the, the mobile data 
um, information about where the people are located, where the demand is developing, but also proliferation on sensors um, provide uh, new challenges uh, for water utilities because um, of the privacy issues, because of the ownership of data. So all of those will have to be addressed. Um, the efficiency required in water management can be improved using um, digitalization, digital means, sensor data. For example, aging infrastructure. You know, uh, there is quite a new development in robotics that could help us with that. Uh, sensing, um, so increasing the life or lengthening the life of the infrastructure and also investing in areas where they are most needed. Limited funding um, is also something that could be um, helped by investing only in those areas of high risk. Future uncertainties, how do we deal with the future uncertainties if we don't have the data about uh, the current state and also the developments within the system. And regulation and customer expectations will drive utilities more towards sensing, towards having more uh, data to show uh, how efficient uh, they are. Um, customer engagement is another area where I see big um, impact and involvement of uh, digital means because um, in order to increase the efficiency in the households where water is being used, where lots of energy is being used, we will need digital means. So um, there are quite a few uh, of new entrants in this area of digital um, transformation who are looking into how customers using water and how they can use it more efficiently. With that, I'll finish my presentation and thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a very successful meeting and once again, um, I'm very sorry for not being um, able to be uh, with you today. Thank you. Bye-bye.